Hi everyone. In the age of sail, when empires were built on the might of their fleets, one ship stood as a symbol of French naval ambition, the magnificent Le Royal Louis. Launched in 1692 under the reign of the Sun King, Louis XIV, this 104-gun behemoth was more than just a warship, it was a floating fortress, a masterpiece of wood and firepower, designed to dominate the seas. But what made this vessel so extraordinary? How did it reflect the glory, and the limits, of France's golden age of naval power? Join us as we dive into the history of Le Royal Louis, from its opulent decorations to its untimely end. This is the story of a king's dream, cast in timber and cannon. The man tasked with bringing Le Royal Louis to life was Laurent Hubac, one of France's most renowned naval architects of the late 17th century. As the chief shipwright at the Brest Arsenal, Hubac was a pioneer in designing massive first-rate ships that balanced firepower, stability, and ornate grandeur. His work reflected the era's shift toward standardized shipbuilding under Minister of Marine Jean-Baptiste Colbert, who sought to challenge England and the Dutch Republic's naval dominance. Hubac's design for Le Royal Louis drew from earlier French three-deckers but pushed boundaries in size and armament. The ship's 110-plus guns, later increased, and 2,400-ton displacement made it one of the largest warships of its time, a deliberate statement of Louis XIV's imperial ambition. Built for endurance, the ship featured a reinforced oak frame and a deep draft to support its weighty broadsides. Its three gun decks followed the French tiered battery system, maximizing firepower without sacrificing stability. True to its name, Royal Louis, the ship boasted lavish gilded carvings, including the royal coat of arms, mythological figures, and intricate stern galleries, a visual declaration of bourbon power. With three masts and a complex sail arrangement, it prioritized maneuverability for its size, though such ships were still cumbersome in battle. Launched in 1692, the ship's commissioning coincided with the Nine Years' War, 1688-1697, where France's navy clashed with Anglo-Dutch forces. Its sheer size drew awe, but also skepticism, such giants were costly to maintain and difficult to deploy effectively. Le Royal Louis was designed to serve two key purposes. As a first-rate ship of the line, it was meant to lead squadrons, anchoring the French battle line in major engagements. Its firepower could devastate enemy flagships in close combat. More than a weapon, it was a floating propaganda piece. Its grandeur intimidated rivals and reassured allies of France's naval resurgence under Louis XIV. After its grand launch in 1692, Le Royal Louis was immediately commissioned into the French Mediterranean fleet as a flagship. 1692-94, France was embroiled in the Nine Years' War against the Grand Alliance, England, Dutch Republic, Spain. Despite its strength, Le Royal Louis saw no major battles, partly due to France's cautious naval strategy after the disastrous Battle of La Hougue, 1692, where many French ships were destroyed. The ship primarily served as a deterrent, patrolling the Mediterranean and participating in fleet maneuvers to project French dominance. In 1694, during a routine exercise near Toulon, Le Royal Louis suffered a catastrophic collision with another French warship, Le Faudroyant. The impact caused severe damage to its hull, rendering it unseaworthy. Unlike smaller ships, repairing such a massive vessel was deemed too costly and time-consuming. 
After just two years in service, the Royal Louis was stripped of its guns and fittings, then broken up for timber, a humbling end for a ship meant to last decades. By the 1690s, naval warfare was shifting toward smaller, more maneuverable ships. The Royal Louis was a relic of an older philosophy, powerful but impractical. France's declining naval focus, after La Hougue, Louis XIV prioritized land wars, leaving his grand ships underused. Thanks for watching.